Hi, my name is Benjamin Terrier and I'm a specialist in internal medicine in Cochin Hospital in Paris, France. And I'm really delighted to talk about polyarthritis nodosa, uh, which is a particular form of uh, systemic necrotizing vasculitis. So, uh, as you may probably know, the Chapel Hill Conference Consensus define polyarthritis nodosa as a necrotizing vasculitis of the medium or small arteries without glomerulonephritis or vasculitis involving the arterioles, the capillaries or the venules, and PAN is never associated with ANCA. The initial description of the disease was made um, 150 years ago by uh, Kussmaul and Meyer, and uh, the initial description is interesting because it was showing the case of a young man which came to and was referred to the Freiburg Clinic uh, for a major deterioration of the general status. And as you can see on this slide, um, the feelings of the physician were very specific because uh, they were saying that the patient was one of those patients for whom we can already give the prognosis before giving the diagnosis. And it was a good way to show how um, the health condition of the patient was poor. And so one year after that, Kussmaul and Meyer described in this initial report the diagnosis of polyarthritis nodosa. So, as many other vasculitis, uh, the American College of Rheumatology um, tried to establish some classification criteria in 1990 uh, to distinguish in a patient with a proven vasculitis, the different vasculitis between each other. And as you can see, the presence of weight loss, of levedo reticularis, of uh, peripheral nerve involvement, of high blood pressure for the diastolic blood pressure, or uh, arteriographic abnormality were highly suggestive of polyarthritis nodosa. And if you had at least three of the previous criteria, uh, you had a good sensitivity and specificity for the diagnosis of PAN. Uh, later, uh, for a French vasculitis study group, uh, established some uh, diagnostic criteria, and as you can see, uh, the, some arteriographic abnormalities, a mononeuropathy, uh, hepatitis B virus antigen or DNA in the serum, were positive diagnostic criteria for PAN, and on the opposite, some positive ANCA, the presence of asthma, the presence of glomerulonephritis, or uh, ENT manifestation or cryoglobulinemia were uh, not associated with PN and were negative criteria. And so we can see this criteria at maybe like exclusion criteria for the diagnosis of PN. So PAN is an ANCA-associated necrotizing vasculitis, and as you can see, uh, we can have some fibrinoid necrosis of the media, which is quite uh, suggestive of necrotizing vasculitis. You can have a thrombosis of the lumen of the vessels and a very important perivascular uh, inflammation, mainly containing polymorphonuclear cells. And this uh, injury of the vessels is responsible for an ischemia and sometimes necrosis of the affected organs that can lead to uh, the clinical manifestations. You can see on this picture some very uh, suggestive uh, picture of polyarthritis nodosa that we can see in uh, the muscles or the peripheral nerve. So you can have these very important uh, infiltrates, uh, which is a panarthritis. It concerns the three layers of the arteries. And you can have a necrotizing uh, fibrinoid necrosis of the media. And you can see here also the thrombosis of the lumen, which can be responsible for the ischemia or the necrosis or of the, the, the affected organs. So in terms of epidemiology, uh, PAN is a very rare disease, but the epidemiological studies uh, uh, came from um, more than 20 years, but uh, at this time uh, the incidence was lower than one case per 
100,000 uh, inhabitants and the prevalence uh, was roughly between 6 in the UK and 35 in Paris um, cases for 1 million inhabitants. And clearly we observed during the two last decades a decrease of the incidence of PAN and especially the PAN related to the hepatitis B virus infection especially because of uh, the vaccination against HBV. So today, the main cause of PAN is idiopathic cause, but there is also some viral infection, still the hepatitis B virus infection, but also the HCV, the HIV, and also some specific virus like the parvovirus B19, or also EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, who can be responsible for a chronic active form of the disease, which can really be responsible for huge aneurysms and inflammation. And also, we have to think about uh, the deficiency of adenosine diamine S2, and we will talk it, we, about that later, about uh, vexus, which can also be a cause of the disease. So, um, the disease usually um, occur in a little bit more uh, male than female, uh, with a median age of 50 years old. And as you can see, uh, the constitutional manifestations occur in roughly 90% of cases. Then the peripheral neuropathy, mainly multiple mononeuropathy, with very acute, asymmetric and painful onset is uh, usually typical. And also the skin involvement, the gastrointestinal involvement and the high blood pressure, uh, which is a, a vascular nephropathy, can be suggestive of the disease. You can see on this picture some uh, imaging uh, from arteriography showing the aneurysms and the stenosis. Uh, here it's uh, in the vascul uh, vascular uh, vessels uh, in the liver. You can see here some pictures in the kidney. So with this uh, micro aneurysms and when you are waiting a little bit more uh, the, the time to take the pictures you can see some areas for which uh, the, the, the uh, imaging uh, product is uh, less visible and so it's usually um, associated with uh, infarcts and so we know that we can have some renal infarcts or a spleen infarcts in, uh, during the, the setting of polyarteritis nodosa. Regarding the prognosis and the treatment, clearly uh, the management is based on the five factor score and we use the one that was established in 1996 because it was specifically designed for PAN and also eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. So you can see here the five factors that were significantly associated with a poor prognosis and we are dealing about overall survival and this is the reason why in patients for which there was no poor prognosis factor uh, uh, treatment based only on glucocorticoids initially was uh, preferred but in patients with at least one poor prognosis factor the, the treatment was based on a combination of glucocorticoids and also immunosuppressive agents usually cyclophosphamide at the induction phase then as a cyoprine or metotrexate or the uh, maintenance phase so with this regimen that was uh, proposed uh, as soon as the FFS was designed, you can see that um, the vasculitis relapse was mainly um, associated with primary and idiopathic polyarteritis nodosa. Uh, and the death was mainly associated with the presence of hepatitis B virus polyarteritis nodosa. Uh, regarding the long-term outcome of patients that were included in the SHUSPAN trials that evaluated the therapeutic management in polyarteritis nodosa, as you can see, uh, the risk of relapse of vasculitis flare was uh, higher in microscopic polyangiitis compared to polyarteritis nodosa, but what was quite interesting is that if you look at the dotted line, which is what should have been based on the FFS, the prognosis 
of the patient with polyarthritis nodosa, uh, um, uh, FFS-based management according to the severity of the disease seemed to improve the overall prognosis of the patients. So, the very important point of that is that the first-line treatment is still based on the use of glucocorticoids and conventional immunosuppressive agents. We have, however, some patients which are refractory uh, to conventional immunosuppressive agents or relapsing uh, and to try to give some insight about the use of biologics, we uh, set up a retrospective European multicenter study to evaluate the use of biologics. As you can see, the three main uh, biologics that were used were TNF alpha blockers, rituximab or tocilizumab, the anti interleukin 6 receptor antibodies. And um, the data we had suggested that TNF alpha blockers and tocilizumab could maybe achieve higher rates of remission and have a better glucocorticoid sparing than the other biologics. But as you can see on the right, um, there was more withdrawal of tocilizumab for severe adverse events, suggesting that the use of this treatment should be clearly defined uh, using a case-by-case -case approach. Um, regarding the specific case of uh, polyarthritis nodosa related to adenosine deamine 2 deficiency, which is a genetic a germinal mutation um, affecting ADA2, uh, it's important to note that it's occurring in young children. Uh, we can have a familial history. Uh, there is a lot of fever, and what is really atypical in polyarthritis nodosa, there was early onset lacunar strokes. Uh, DEDA2 is also an immune deficiency that can be something uh, important for the diagnosis and this mutation is responsible for an imbalance uh, of the monocytes towards a pro-inflammatory M1 phenotype. And what is quite interesting is that um, by considering a population of uh, idiopathic PAN in adults, uh, colleagues from the US identify 6.8% of patients that showed some mutations in ADA2. Currently, the treatment of this specific form of PAN is very important to know because, uh, as described in, the, in this letter in the New England Journal of Medicine, the use of TNF alpha blockers dramatically changed the prognosis of the patients because before the use of TNF alpha blockers, uh, some strokes. Uh, occurred regularly in these patients and after the use of TNF alpha blockers there was no stroke anymore at all. Um, there is also the specific case of the cutaneous polyarthritis nodosa uh, because it's not a systemic vasculitis. It's what we call a single organ vasculitis affecting the skin even if there was there is sometimes some uh, sensory neuropathy in the, in the territories affected by the skin involvement. And what is important is that the evolution is a, a chronic and a relapsing course, uh, and it very rarely evolved towards a systemic PN. So because of that, and because of the chronic and relapsing course, uh, the treatment should be based first on um, uh, non-aggressive treatments like colchicine, uh, dapson, hydroxychloroquine, and in case we can uh, go uh, to uh, the glucocorticoids, then the immunosuppressive agents, but usually it's not the first-line treatment. So to conclude, polyarthritis nodosa is a NANCAN negative necrotizing vasculitis. The incidence decreased concomitantly with uh, HBV vaccination, but maybe it seems that idiopathic PN or baby related to unknown cause seems to be maybe a little bit more frequent. You have to consider a diagnosis of adenosine, adenosine deamine 2 deficiency uh, in the setting of polyarthritis nodosa if you have a young age or a multiplex family, early onset lacunar stroke or relapsing cutaneous involvement and the treatments is still based on the use of glucocorticoids and conventional immunosuppressive agents, except for the data 2 
for which uh, the treatment is based as, as soon as you have the diagnosis on TNF-alpha blockers. So I thank you for your attention. See you later.